Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I am in the shop. I'm fixing to make a lid for like a uh, like a manhole, I guess, for a piece of 36 inch pipe that we set in the ground down here on part of the farm. It's got like three valves in there going to different situations on his uh, place. So anyway, but he needs a lid for it. Piece of 36 inch pipe in the ground, but it ain't got no lid. I have this extra circle from a project that I did last year for some horse feeders. It's five foot, I need 37 inches. I'm gonna try to cut a circle but also notches around the whole thing so I can break them all over so it'll have like a probably like a two inch lip all the way around. Got my jack stand set out. Got these new B&B &B slash Matthew Deerman uh, jack stands that I've heard a lot about. Buddies that I know have them. They sent me some to try out and I've, I've always liked them. What I really like about them is that bottom screw situation. It tightens and it keeps it uh, sturdy. They have a little bit of a wider base compared to these other ones that I've always had. But I'm gonna try try it out for the first time today. Super excited about it, but so that's what I'm doing today. First things first, I gotta do some figuring. What we have right now is 60 inches, I believe. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my center be 30 inches. Come on. Put me a little little punch mark. Half of 37 is 18 and a half, right? Get my old handy dandy compass situation. I ought to be able to get 18 inches out of that, right? Take a look, see here. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh shoot, look at there, son. Now, I want a two inch lip all the way around it with notches taken out to where I can fold like a two or three inch tab up, several two or three, two and three inch tabs all the way around. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I do not have any like two inch by one eighth flat. Yes, I could go get some, but I'm using this opportunity to learn how much I need to take out if I was in a situation where I didn't need, or where I didn't have some flat strap. And in this situation, it's not necessarily paying. This is kind of like a family thing. I'm just kind of helping him out, utilizing this as a cap, because I wasn't going to use it for anything else. So I'm just utilizing this. Uh, he needs a cap for his thing. And so I'm just, I'm just making it work with what I got without spending any money. And I think it's a great learning experience. So that's, that's what I'm doing. But I'm going to go ahead and measure two inches out and then make another circle all right all right so what i got so far is three two foot framing squares i got two laid out with the corners meeting up right here in the dead center I'm gonna take this other framing square and lay it in here. And that bird outside is gonna help us. Lay it right here. Get them square with one another. All right, how do we feel about that? So now, in theory, I should be able to mark down the correct side of our square here. Move this guy. In theory, I ought to be able to mark here, here, here and there. Wish you were here so you could mark this for me. Now in theory, this should be divided up nice and square-like. It's all in theory, and I can. So now, what do we need to do? I don't know, I'll get right back with you. We gotta do some more thinking. Drink a cup of coffee, do some more thinking. What I've done now is got this fancy tool that Matthew Dearman also sent me. I've never seen such a thing, but it's super handy in this situation. And what I did was I just lined up my 90 right here, got everything lined up, and then I just turned it 45 degrees to find the center of all my quarters that I've already quartered out. This quarter, 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 quarter. Now I'm finding the center of my quarters, which will be, it'll be divided into eighths that way. 
and then I'm just gonna keep going down until I get small enough to whatever I think is a good amount of section to be folding down and then figure out how much pie I need to cut out right here to, to fold and then make my lip all the way around. This is what we call self-taught. I would love to know like the other way to divide all this up. I assume it's similar to something with a protractor, but I've never actually learned from somebody with more experience than me as far as dividing a, like even if this was a square plate, making a circle and dividing it all up. I assume it has something to do with the protractor, but I don't know what kind of little tips and tricks somebody might know uh, with just using a square, you know? I don't know. But uh, this is just the way that I know to do it right now in the moment. There's more than one way to skin a cat, you know what I'm saying? I just realized that I've already messed up because this side of my straight edge is not lined up with my zero. I've got a little inch gap right here. So that's going to throw the whole apparatus off. Yeah, exactly one inch from the side of my straight edge that I've been marking down here to that zero. So my straight edge needs to be one mark over. So I've got it marked right here, so really I just need to come over one inch. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish all this, get this all broke down into smaller pieces of pie, if you will. For those of you that remember whatever math class that was, I don't know, didn't make no sense back in school, but it's essentially what I'm doing is just breaking the circle up into, you know, sections. You can go, you know, go down as small as you want, but I'm gonna go down to a few I don't know yet, and then I'll get back with you. Here's what I've been doing. You can see I've got all those broke down into, uh, let's see, those would be eight, it'd be sixteenths, I believe. But what I've done for this little situation. Anyway, the way this thing works is see, you line up this with 90 and then you got zero here and zero here. Well, you can't just mark on the side of this straight edge over here. You gotta mark where the zero is. So I took a one inch deal out of a combination square. I just laid it up against here and marked on this side of it on everywhere where I turned it that way it would be on zero. But I'm gonna go ahead and do some more thinking and do some more notching, cut it out, and then go to breaking it over and see what it looks like. It's definitely very time consuming, but fun all at the same time. All right, so I got most of it cut out. I did leave one or two inch spots all the way around to let it cool off to try to keep it from warping as bad. This is only 14 gauge, definitely not ideal. The plasma would definitely work better, but again, I like to, I like to learn about metal and see what you can get away with. Um, I think it improves your, your skill, you know, whenever you can run a torch on light metal and, and uh, make it work. But in this particular situation, since this is what I had, and it's kind of a, a, a favor, I will actually probably go in here with some angle to kind of brace it up, or I might try to put a little break in it. And then whenever I 
bend all these tabs up. I'll, I'll grind these out with a grinder with a zip disc. And then I'll bend all these tabs up and tack them. That'll make it sturdy also and kind of take the warp out of it. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm going to let it cool off and then finish cutting it. And then probably let it cool off again before I, you know, actually knock it out of there. Because seeing as how I am cutting thin material with a torch, some of it does kind of weld back together. I try to keep that from happening, but there might be little spots um, still kind of welded. But, uh, but I'll just knock it out of there. Go ahead and zip all my notches out and then uh, go from there. Bend all my tabs up and weld it up. And what I used here was this apparatus. It's a straight torch, or I call it a straight torch right here. The head's straight instead of a 90 situation. And uh, they got this little thing that I got from my local welding supply. I don't know, a circle burner maybe is what you'd call it. Anyway, it's a brass deal and it comes with different sizes of <clears throat> pieces that go in here. I modified this one. I cut it right here and put this bar in here to make it longer. There you have it, like a big old tuna can lid. That right there is uh, satisfying for some reason. Just the fact that you can mold something like this all from one piece. Yes, it takes way more time. Not necessary, not efficient at all, you know, for doing it for customers, but still handy to know how to do, you know, if you're doing something for yourself and you have time, or uh, if you just want to learn like I do. Anyway, now all I'm gonna do is weld all these seams up obviously like not spot weld but i'm gonna i'm probably gonna tack all the corners first like the bottom here and then go through and skip weld you know make a weld here make a weld across from it weld over here weld over here and just keep alternating and probably let it cool off a little bit and then finish it and the warp that i had is no more that putting that lift in there took the warp out which is pretty neat also it's actually got a little bit of a bow like this, which is good because then it won't hold water because it's going to be outside. Pretty neat, I will say. Then I will end up probably making a weld around here. See, I mean, I've already got a lot of time in it, and I got so much more time to go. But I'll finish it, show you some footage, and then we'll wrap up this video.
and there you have it. If I could do it differently, I zipped those tabs right here and I folded them down. That was me getting in a hurry. What I would do next time, so I wouldn't have to weld this whole seam back, is I would bend it where the part that I grinded was on the inside. So then it would just look like a break all the way around. That's what I would do differently, but I mean it turned out all right. Put me some inch and a quarter square tubing in here to stiffen it up before I welded all that up. Now we got us a manhole cover. That is pretty much it. I'm just gonna put a little, probably a tab on each side maybe, or but I'll get a picture or a little bit of video of it installed, like on top of the pipe that's in the ground down there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it. That was a lot of work. I feel like a, like I said earlier, like a blacksmith. I feel like a blacksmith, like a, like a molding metal, you know. Definitely not worth the time, but it's good learning experience for like building welding beds or, you know, trying to make custom things whenever you don't have a brake press or the brake press can't. I don't even know if you could have broke this with a brake press if you had to, you know, do something like this, which like I said, you would normally just get a piece of flat and put around it. But uh, anyway, it's good practice, good learning, and I'm glad I've done it, but and I'm glad it's over with. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. We'll see y'all next Friday. And remember, learn something every day.